Hello, it's Eric Lip Sinky here again on the internet, and today I wanted to talk about something that a lot of people have been talking about, which is the controversy over Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy founder Ken Tamplin. Now, I think uh, nobody disputes the fact that Ken Tamplin uh, in the 80s was uh, on top of the world. Great singer, great guitar player, and, you know, has uh, some business savvy as well. Has grown a successful YouTube channel over the years. I don't think anybody's denying that. I also don't think anybody's denying that Phil from Wings of Pegasus is a, a decent guy and means well with his analysis videos. And so instead of casting judgment on that, I think what I want to do instead is talk about something that I don't hear anybody talking about, which is what all of this analysis and objective data and everything is, is hinged upon and what tool that is. And so that's uh, this tool, the Vocal Pitch Monitor app. Now, I've uh, used the Vocal Pitch Monitor app for a long time. Uh, I actually hum into it on the phone and I transpose the notes on the side uh, and offer uh, piano or violin or, or whatever it might be. So a lot of times I'll just kind of hum an idea in there and it's a great tool for that. But it's also a great tool for being able to tell what notes uh, a singer on another song is doing. It's great at picking up vocals and even picking up multiple things at the same time, which is kind of exciting as well. So you can transpose orchestral scores uh, and multiple instruments at the same time, which is a potential application of it. It's a very powerful tool and it's, it's pretty cool. But a lot of this hinges upon the way that Vocal Pitch Monitor works as an app and also whether the things that Phil says are actually true. Can a great singer be able to replicate, you know, down to the individual sense of which there are 100 cents between each semitone uh, in the Western musical scale? I think everybody knows that if you watch one or two music theory videos on YouTube. And so, you know, is it possible down to the 100th of a second to hit those exact inflections and to be able to have uh, the vibrato in your voice kind of function the exact same way over 30 years or whatever it might be. You know, that's really what all this hinges upon and Phil says it is impossible. And so I figured I'd do a little experiment and so we're going to now switch over and use the camera on my laptop which isn't as good as this camera but we'll use that one and switch over to it so that we can use the app on my phone you guys can see the screen at the same time. Uh, so we're going to switch over now. As you guys have seen, uh, Phil uses an app on his phone, which I'll show here on my computer screen. Hopefully you guys can see that. If it's uh, There it goes. Yeah, get in focus. It's called Vocal Pitch Monitor. And this is what Phil from Wings of Pegasus was using to be able to analyze uh, the voice of Kent Tamplin to be able to confirm that you know, a vocal from 1990 was used on his uh, 2023 or performance or whatever it was. I'm going to... Might be uh, fudging the numbers there a little bit on what the dates are and those things. But regardless, this video really is not about the, the specifics of the Ken Tamplin thing. It's not about whether Phil is, is right or Ken is right or any of that. This is about uh, can you trust vocal pitch monitor? Because uh, I think that's really what all this depends on. Now when you open up the program, you guys, uh, you'll see something that looks like this right here. So on the left side, there are piano notes, and it's kind of hard to see. Maybe if I zoom in real close, you guys can see that, like, C, F, and E, and G, G2, all that stuff. So those are the actual notes that are being said. And so when I talk into the microphone, you know, and into the phone's microphone, and also <laughs> my microphone that I'm holding at the same time, uh, it actually picks up what note I'm singing. And so if I sing into this, you, you'll be able to see the actual notes that I'm singing displayed on the screen. So let me give that a shot. You can see that little staircase that just happened right there. So it's actually picking up the notes that I'm singing. And that's uh, what Phil is using to be able to tell if vocals are lip synced or not. So the thesis of this is basically that when you make a performance, like any performance, la 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 la, you can have this little line that appears here that represents the exact notes that you did. And those are as unique basically as snowflakes or fingerprints or something like that. And so I want to see if that's true. Now, um, I'm not exactly an expert on any type of music except for one type of music, and that is my music. Uh, <laughs> and so I figure what better way to test this than to sing a line from one of my songs that I wrote five times into Vocal Pitch Monitor 
and see if I can get exactly or close to exactly the same notes on this or if indeed they are all different. And so if I can get two takes to be exactly or almost exactly the same and have lines cross over each other, then in theory maybe Ken Tamplin could do it as well. So maybe we'll try five or ten tries and see if I'm able to get one that's exactly the same. Now, a little caveat, obviously I don't have a metronome, and so it would perhaps be helpful if I could have the same metronome going while I give it a shot. And so I think I'll try that to make sure that um, everything will line up the exact same way and I won't be kind of dragging or speeding up on any. So let me make that happen and I'll have a click track going in my ear here. Give me one second. So I've got a uh, metronome going here at 120 beats per minute and I've got my uh, vocal pitch monitor here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing the same song five times in a row and see if any of them are the same. Okay, so here we go. We'll give it a little count in and then I'll give it a shot. Now remember, this is a song that I wrote, and so don't laugh at me. I've been a lot of places before. 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 Oh my god. You know what? I forgot to hit the record button at the bottom. At the very bottom of Vocal Pitch Monitor, there's a record button, and I forgot to hit it. Oh my god. All right, let's try this whole thing again. I've been a lot of places before. 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 Okay, so there you guys have it. Uh, let's take a listen now and let's check these out. Okay, hi guys, uh, welcome back. What I've done is I've taken those five different samples of me trying to sing the exact same line and I've stacked them up with each other and what we're gonna do is play them individually and then what we're gonna do is play them uh, on top of each other and take a look and see if any of the lines match up. So uh, let's switch over here to our monitor and let's take a look. I've been a lot of places before. I've been a lot of places before. And there's number two, and you can see it's clearly different. And what I've done is uh, I've changed it so that each line is a different color so that we can see which one uh, is which take uh, I've been when we continue a lot on. Of places before. Let's take three here is red. I've been a lot of places And number four before. is blue. And some of these lines are looking pretty similar, uh, but I'm not sure if they're exactly the same, so we'll have to see once they're stacked on top of each other. So let's get ready for that. I've been a lot of places and number before. five, take five, is uh, I made it purple. All right, now we're going to stack take two on top of take number one. Let's take a look at that together. I've been a lot of places before. All right, let's pause that real quick, and let's take a quick look at that. Uh, so it's pretty interesting results here. You guys can definitely see that my original take, take number one with the yellow, does not line up with the green. There are some places where they do overlap with each other, but for the most part, they are not overlapping each other, especially at the end. You can see that the vibrato was much wider on take number one than take number two. But there are some spots, though, that are extremely close. Uh, you can see that line right there in the second kind of uh, grouping right there at the end is almost the exact same. But uh, in most other places, it's not lining up at all. So let's go on to uh, now take number three, and let's see what happens when we line up takes one, two, and three. I've been right, here a we lot go. Of places before. Let's pause that and take a quick look at that. So take one, yellow, take two is green, and take three is that red-orange kind of line there. And again, you can see that uh, take three starts a little bit before than the the other two did. Gets a little bit higher in that first group, goes a little higher in that second group. And again, the vibrato is different. It even cuts off a little bit earlier at the end there. So neither of these three takes have been uh, identical. Let's 
Let's go on to number four now. Let's see what happens when we have four of them stacked up. I've been a lot of places before. Let's pause it right there. And again, you can see uh, take four is our new blue line here. It goes fa up faster at the end here than the first four did. And again, goes a little higher in the beginning group there than the others did and, and just doesn't line up with the others. It seems that it goes up, you know, a little bit faster faster and started even a little bit before the last one did as well so so things aren't lining up as well uh, for this fourth one let's take a look at the fifth one now and see if that has any consistency with the other four I've been a lot of places before and let's pause there and take a look at this and yeah again totally different you can see here that little valley uh, right there before the high part at the end is higher for this purple fifth take than it was for all the others and again the vibrato is totally different so there are some parts as you guys can see where it's kind of similar but in most places it's totally different um, so let's zoom in a little bit here and see if we can see this uh, a little more clearly now so this right here is kind of a super zoom in on the line and I wasn't able to get the bars uh, out of this um, so you can see the different colored bars but we're gonna ignore that and just focus on the lines uh, you can again see the yellow line at the beginning there started lower tone-wise uh, than all the other ones were and went from low to high uh, a lot more dramatically than the other four takes did. But, you know, you can see that the red take there got the highest in this middle area right there. And then the yellow one uh, had a vibrato that lasted just a little bit longer uh, than all the other ones did. Um, but, yeah, no consistency at all. You can see several parts where you can see one line, two lines, three lines, and they're not overlapping with each other at all. And so this right here is, is what Phil was saying, is that uh, when you have real live vocals, that they're never going to be exactly the same as each other. And when you do have two lines that are precisely identical, it can only mean that you took one recording and then just overlaid it on top of each other. And I can do that same experiment and show you guys here if I were to copy one of these lines right here and then overlap each other will look exactly like what we saw uh, with Ken Tamplin in Phil's video. So let's do that example here just to show you guys. All right, guys. So I've gone ahead here and made a copy of the first take right here, which is that yellow one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the copy up above like this and then crop off the bottom from the copy so that you can't see the play buttons right there. So it's just the lines themselves and then the letters over here on the left. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up right here, and you guys can see that when you line them up right here, they the lines go exactly over each other, and you can even see they kind of cancel each other out, and you can't even tell that there's two lines there when you put them over each other exactly like this. Uh, but this is exactly what was going on in Phil's videos with all of Ken's. You can literally see that he took a line from a recorded vocal, which is what we have here, and he put it over a backing track that was playing live when he was singing. And so sometimes he would be re really singing and maybe his voice would be real low below the backing vocal that was recorded like this. But you know, it, it sometimes he just simply doesn't sing at all and the original vocal which matches up precisely to his original recording uh, appears there in the video analysis as Phil did. Um, so I think that this right here has been pretty conclusive today. We took five samples of my voice right there, and I tried my very hardest to make them exactly the same, uh, but I was unable to do it. The lines were, were totally not on top of each other like this is exactly. Uh, and so I think that, you know, we can trust the Vocal Pitch Monitor app, as we've seen here today. It does suss out if you test it for yourself, and I encourage you guys to do so as well. Uh, and you could definitely do the same thing with Ken's vocals and, and download the original if you can get a backup of his video. I think he took it down, but if you can get an original of his live show right there and then compare it to his 1990 uh, recording, if you've got an mp3 of that, you could do the same analysis for yourself. But uh, I'm not going to do that in this video just because I wanted to see, you know, is can you trust Vocal Pitch Monitor at all? Does it do what Phil claims that it can uh, do? And, and it does. Uh, so I think that's enough for this video. And so uh, as far as, you know, making a judgment call on it, I, I think that it's a, like a lot of people have said that Ken's voice is getting older. You know what I mean? He can't get as high as he used to. And so he just did this to try to get through this this one show, you know what I mean, to make people happy. And uh, 
I think that, you know, Lenny Kravitz did it as well on another video that we saw. And, and so a lot of people have done this over the years. Uh, even in the 60s, there's a very famous video on the Ed Sullivan show of the Mamas and the Papas lip syncing to like uh, Monday Monday where, where uh, Michelle Phillips is eating a banana while she's singing. You know, the record is singing. It's very funny. Uh, but, you know, Ken Tamplin was trying to, to be a little bit deceptive about it. And, you know, I, I think that, again, he has come clean on this about three four weeks ago and said that yes he did use a, a backing track that one time but he still is a, a good singer and i think that um you know i, I agree with that obviously ken uh, can play guitar and he can sing uh, but at least you know two times he had used a backing track so i'm not necessarily upset at ken for doing that i just think that it is a, a fact that it did happen uh, so I, I'm, you know, okay with moving on um, and, and saying, okay, big deal. I just want to state also that this video is not uh, trying to bully anyone. It's not trying to make anyone feel bad. It's really just trying to see if Phil's hypothesis of his theories about vocal pitch monitor, about it being impossible for a singer to be able to recreate the same vocal on the same lines as it appears in the graph uh, in the same way. And, you know, we confirm that that is true, at least in my case. I definitely can't make them the same. I don't think that any person on earth has that skill to do. If Ken can do it, I certainly would love to see Ken uh, get on video and sing the same line five times in a row and see if he can get them to match up. Uh, and perhaps uh, he's a good enough singer that he can. And so we'll have to wait and see if he does that. So anyway, uh, until next time, I appreciate you guys watching this. I hope that this has been interesting. I hope that you guys download Vocal Pitch Monitor and give this a try yourself. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video.